everybody. Well, today is a momentous day. I am taking the last ride in my little i3 here. Um, this car has done us really very well for five years now. It's a six-year-old car. We got it as an ex-demonstrator when it was a year old. And um, we wanted to get into, or I wanted to get into, and my wife went along with it, uh, get into the whole electric driving world um, early if we could. And this, uh, this is a car that has the range extender engine in the back. So it is basically a battery car. It's a, normally a full battery car, but it does have this little engine that I call the outboard motor that's a tiny little motor in the back. And uh, so you can use a small amount of petrol um, if you need to, which is important because this has a range that's, you know, on a really good day, you might get 75 miles from it. And, uh, uh, and so certainly when we started, the charging infrastructure in the UK really wasn't up to reliable driving around the country. This was our only car. And so having the ability to use petrol as, as we call it, our get out of jail free card um, was very important. Now, in actual fact, if you look at how much petrol we've used, it's been very, very small. The vast majority of our driving has been entirely on battery. And uh, <clears throat> I have, for example, driven from here to the Lake District and back, um, which is mm, 300 miles in each direction, 350, um, entirely on, on, on battery. Uh, it was quite possible even back then, that was in the early days when chargers weren't nearly as, uh, as um, regularly spaced as they are now, uh, and, and uh, in particular were very unreliable. So it's done us very well. I have to say also though it was an early model and perhaps because of the slight complexity of this, this clever um, charging supplement system thing, um, it's, it did have to spend rather a lot of time in the, uh, in the repair shop uh, when we first got it. And um, a lot of that, to be honest, was, was due to the fact that it has this range extender and the complexity of the electronics there. But some bits of it were things that you really hope a company like BMW would have sorted out by now. Things like the screen here, um, the backlight died on it. Oh, we thought, you just need a new bulb for your backlight. No, you need a complete new screen. So that was, fortunately, we were paying for the extended warranty um, because that would have been £2,000, basically, for a new backlight. Um, I would be very hesitant about buying another BMW of any sort because that's not to do with it being an electric vehicle. And so, because we were slightly terrified of the, the likely service charge costs um, of this car, we, uh, you know, if any expensive bit had to be met, replaced, we had almost every expensive bit replaced under, under warranty. And so we were paying for this extended warranty, which was 700 and something pounds a year, um, which rather takes the shine off all the money you're saving by not using petrol. Um, so there have been problems with this car. I should say, however, that friends of mine who had the same car had no problems at all. So I think maybe we just got unlucky. And now that almost every bit has been replaced, it's actually a great little car. It's a very reliable car. Um, <laughs> let's say it hasn't been into the, into the workshop for six months or something now. Um, but generally, it's done as well for five years. We've written, done 30, 000, more than 30,000 miles in it. Um, it is lovely to drive. It's a very nice environment to be in. And um, the, uh, the cabin is interesting. It's unusual. I get into other cars, and I get back into this one, and I feel just how much nicer this is. It's light. It's airy. Um, I do really like a lot of things about this car. It's a very sensible size for carrying spaniels uh, or small amounts of shopping or whatever um, around small Cambridge streets. This is all very good. However, we felt the time had probably come for a change, particularly when we went on a longish trip to Cornwall um, recently, and actually the charging and, you know, travelling there wasn't an issue, though you do make quite a lot of stops uh, charging between here and Cornwall. Um, no, the issue was that even with just two of us and a dog, 
uh, the back was very full. You know, we had the seat down, we had suitcases, you know, we had stuff for a couple of weeks and, and it really was, um, you know, fairly, uh, we were doing a self-catering thing. It really was fairly crowded. Anyway, sorry, very long introduction, but to say that this is my last ride in this little car because I'm taking it to be part exchanged for a Tesla Model 3, uh, which is very exciting for me, partly because um, I think they're great fun cars, but partly because actually this, is the fir this will be the first new car I've ever had. I've always bought cars that have been at least a year, year old. This was a year old. Uh, and most of my cars, some of my cars have been, you know, really in the last year of their life rather than in the first year of their life, shall we say, when I've purchased them. So, um, so this is a new experience. However, I thought it only fair when I'm handing this over in part exchange not to give it to them completely empty of charge, and it will almost be empty of charge by the time I get to the, the Tesla handover spot. And so, um, so we're stopping off at the new GridServe forecourt at Braintree to charge this up on the way, and then I'll probably stop in there in the Tesla on the way back. Let's see how it goes. Oh, there's one last thing I should explain. One of my hesitations about getting a Model 3 was that it's not a hatchback, it's got a sedan boot. There's no good reason for having one of those, I don't think, instead of a hatchback, but any Tesla with a hatchback is way more expensive. And so one of the things I'm going to miss is the fact that this has a hatchback. However, ironically, just before I swapped over and just before I knew I would probably want to make a video about this, on a dark night, I walked around the corner of the car, not realizing that my wife had already opened the hatchback and walked into it quite hard, which is why for the last few days, I've had a plaster on the side of my head. Now, in this lockdown world where almost all my interactions with people only involve, um, you know, this section of my body, it's kind of ironic that I managed to injure myself on the one place that's exceedingly visible in all video calls and all videos about new cars. But there you go. So that's why I'm walking around with a big patch on my head. <laughs> Somewhere just over here is the new electric forecourt and interestingly the approach road is not on Google Maps yet so I need to work out how to get to it. Um, I think I have to go down here for a little way and um, do a U-turn and come back on the other side. So we'll see how that goes. Um, <laughs> my little car by the way here is down to nine miles of range this is the sort of thing you know I get fairly used to dealing with um, and it will be nice to have a car that has about four times the range of this one so over here on the right the grid serve electric forecourt and this is I think very interesting. I have seen video of this. I have not been here before because this only opened this week. They haven't even got the road signs up for it yet, probably. Everyone welcome, whether or not you have an electric car. So what they have here is 36 rapid chargers and big solar panels on the roof but also they bought a solar farm just down the road to power it. There are big batteries next door um, which allow them to charge significant numbers of cars at once. So here we are. Some of these chargers will do 350 kilowatts. Uh, I think you need to do the full loop here. There are shops, there's a post office, there is um, a, uh, a cafe, which I'm in need of. Here is the Tesla supercharger, which is where I will be coming back to later. Tesla owners, by the way, don't get to go under the, um, uh, un under the canopy here. So, uh, so that's, if it's raining, then all the other uh, vehicle owners probably get to laugh at them. You do have to go around the roundabout quite a bit to actually be able to get in here. Okay, here we go. I can actually choose my park. This is really nice. Up to 90 kilowatts will be fine for me. Here's another i3. I'm going to pull in here. It's really nice to be able to choose which side you're going to uh, pull up uh, and charge. Let's see how this works.
Okay, well, I have plugged in here and I have connected up. Um, and simply, uh, I think all we need to do, connected, that's fine. Click start. Please tap your payment card. How out of date is that when you, in fact, have a contactless device on your wrist? You are not authorized to start charging. Please contact your access provider. Okay, let's go and try another one. Okay, so let's try again. I've come just one back here. I'm gonna plug it in. Ah, it helps, of course, if I remove the caps first. Okay, I'm gonna plug it in. That it is all working fine. Connected okay. I'm on CCS, it knows that. If I say start, now this one is lit up. I think there's a problem with the card, card reader on that one. So, Let's try now. Present card. That looks much happier. Card accepted. Starting charge. So clearly that one has a problem. I'll report it inside in case they're interested. Right. Well, so here you see that was, I'm in base 17 here. Bay 13 clearly has a bit of a problem. Well, this is the last charge of this little car. It's been a good car, really, I have to say, overall. And I love the colour. They haven't made this solar orange colour for quite a long time um, and, uh, and I, I didn't choose it, it was just the colour they happened to have available, but I do think it's the best one. Right, behind me here we have um, the little cafe and shopping centre, so I'm going to go and have a look at that. have my coffee and a mince pie waiting for me over there, which I'm looking forward to. But I just thought I'd come over here and show you that down here there are containers full of batteries. And that is how they can charge so many um, cars at such rapid speeds without putting an undue load on the grid. This is definitely the future. I wish them every success. In the meantime, I need a coffee. So from here you can get a feel for the scale of the solar panels on the roof as well. Um, and rather nice touch behind me here, there are some exercise bikes. If you use the exercise bike, it actually puts energy back into the grid so it helps charge the cars. Well, presumably uh, it, perhaps it just uses a bit less energy for the machine than it otherwise would. I imagine you have to pedal quite hard to get any noticeable range. Um, but it's really nice that they thought of things like that. I think this is, uh, this is a very good start. They're hoping to make a hundred of these stations um, around the country and uh, this is just the first. So coffee, warm place uh, to sit, comfy chairs. Um, it would be a bit crowded if all of these were full, I guess. But when you get to charges like this, which can do, in theory, 350 kilowatts, you're not going to need to charge for more than about 15 minutes. And there was in that, almost that long a queue for the coffee. Um, 
there aren't any cars out there at the moment that can do 350 kilowatts except possibly the Porsche Taycan um, and even then those will not do it for very long. To get anything like that quantity of power into a car you have to, um, it has to be pretty empty, the battery's at just the right temperature and so on. But the um, but the the Model 3 will actually do 250 kilowatts if all the conditions are just right. I'm going to go over and have a look at the uh, at the superchargers here. Just so you know, it's not just for people with big expensive cars here. If you have a car that can only take a Type 2 connector, or if they have um, if they've run out of other spaces, you can still plug in here and uh, and charge up at seven kilowatts. Actually, I think a bit more, or a 22 kilowatt possibly, if you um, have a car that'll do the three-phase thing. Uh, so there's lots of spots, and here's an i3 plugged in. If you're going to be here for a while, that's a more sensible way to do it. Um, and as it happens, all but one of the supercharger bays are actually full at the moment. So, um, so that'll be interesting. But of course, Teslas can still charge on those rapid chargers, and I may even try that. Uh, when I pick up the car, it'll probably have enough charge in it that I won't really need to. Um, but uh, it, it will be interesting to give it a go. Here is a uh, rather nice electric van. I like that. Maxus eDeliver 3. Haven't seen this. I think this is new. Um, rather good. Teslas, Teslas everywhere. And let's see how my little elderly car is doing. I'm 89% charged. Look at that. That is plenty. There you go. Um, doesn't tell me, sadly, unless there's any way to interact with it. I don't think it'll tell me anything about... Yeah, no, it doesn't tell me how, uh, how fast. It doesn't give me a, a details of current or anything, and sadly the car doesn't do that either. But... Um, but that's certainly charged at a good rate, and I am ready to go. Time to, uh, time to disconnect. <laughs> so it's sad that my first attempt to charge at that pump didn't work. Um, so uh, there's clearly still some things to be ironed out. I think the pump's working, it's just the card reader isn't. But when you're in a situation like this, you've got so many to choose from that it really doesn't matter. I just pulled up, I had to move ooh, three or four meters to, uh, to get to the next one and it charged just fine, it charged very nicely in fact. I have my coffee, I have not very far to go. I'm gonna get there a little bit early and this is partly deliberate because one of the things I realize I want to do is make sure that I've done essentially a factory reset or as close as I can get to it on this, um, just to make sure that my contacts and things aren't still stored in the car when it's sold to somebody else. Right. Time to hit the road again. Thank you, GridServe. That was a nice experience. I may well be back here for lunch. They have this very interesting um, visual effect here at the, uh, at the pedestrian crossings. I don't know if you can see this. We're coming up to one here, which makes them look as if they're big blocks in the middle of the road. It's really quite effective. They are, this is purely <laughs> a trompe d'oeil, and uh, no doubt it'll wear out fairly quickly, but it is, you do go, whoa, hang on, how fast should I be going here as I drive over these big concrete blocks? Oh, I tell you what I do need to do. I'm just gonna pull in here. I need to start my sat-nav and find out how we get to where we're going. Okay, we are now, I think, very close. I'm just looking to see you about, got, got about just under a mile to go. And um, you'll note, by the way, that I'm using my phone for navigation here, which I've done for quite a long time because the maps are very out of date in, uh, that are built into the car. BMW want, I think it's 150 pounds to do a map update. That's, what is that, $200, something like that? It's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And there are ways you can buy them online a bit more cheaply than that. Um, 
but it is kind of crazy uh, and it illustrates part of the problem. Also, the, the navigation software here isn't a patch on what's on my phone and this doesn't do CarPlay. Now, interestingly, I thought CarPlay was going to be an absolute requirement of my next car until I knew it was going to be a Tesla, which has good enough software that... Um, that CarPlay isn't needed and is possibly, in fact, a distraction. The navigation software, though, does have its limits on the Tesla. Like, you can't do routes with multiple waypoints in. You have to just say where you're going to go, and all of these things are going to be fixed, according to Elon. But uh, they're not quite there yet. There's the Mercedes dealer, and I think it's just behind the Mercedes dealer over there. Yes, Tesla. spot for customer parking. Well, hello everybody. I am back again, only this time in a rather different vehicle with a rather bigger screen in front of me. And uh, obviously I'm parked over in a different place. I'm about to try my first ever supercharge. Let's go and have a look. I put in the fact I was heading for the supercharger and it started warming up the batteries immediately. This car clearly does not need charging. It's, um, it's got a range of 273 miles on the battery. Now, just to give you an idea, it was rare for me to get 73 miles on the other battery, on the other car. So, um, so uh, this is purely so I have the supercharging experience and because I think this may actually be a nice place to get a sandwich for lunch. So let's go and have a look. <laughs> and the first thing I realise is you need to get a little bit closer than this to the charging point. Rookie mistake. So there are big um, bumpers down here which uh, I think you have to reverse right up to and then you'll be close enough for the lead. So let me just do that. Car in reverse. I love this, by the way. I've set up the easy entry um, mode here, which means that when I get in or out of the car, the steering wheel and the seat go back and give me some more space. When I get back in and put my foot on the brake, it's indicating I'm about to move, the, um, they, they come back to my preferred pos position. So I'm just going to reverse up a little bit here until I get bump. There you go. Now I should be right. Let's have another go. You see that steering wheel moves nice and easy to get out, assuming I can remember how to open the door, which is always a challenge on a Tesla. Right. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, it's that little button there. We have grown up so much expecting to pull a lever to get out of a, a car that when you have to press a button, it's, um, it, it, it's a, a challenge. Okay, so you press a button on here and my charging port opens, plug in, and it'll be interesting to see what now happens. And I can see the screen saying, starting to charge, there you go. And I'll go and have a look. Now, because the battery is really fairly close to being full, it's not going to charge very fast. But, it's... Yeah, 20 kilowatts is actually not bad considering how, uh, how close we are to, uh, to full. So this reckons seven minutes charge remaining. Now that's until I reach my, um, my limit here, which is probably set at about 90% at the moment. Well, we're all charged up and on our way home, but I'm deliberately taking a roundabout route doesn't take me directly home because directly home is just up the highway and what's the fun in that so uh, I'm gonna go and go through some little villages on the way but in general that whole experience was very easy it was um, a completely sort of t almost touch-free handover <laughs> they basically said here are your keys um, and they warn you in advance that uh, they're not going to give you a sort of guided tour of the car and point you at lots of videos which do so um, 
uh, basically I knew what to expect. Um, it really was a case of just, are you happy with this? Yes, okay, and he pressed a button on his phone and the car rebooted and came back uh, associated with me. And uh, so my app could then talk to it. Um, and since then I've been setting up things like my Spotify accounts on it uh, while sitting there um, charging. So this will be really interesting. This is a completely different level of EV experience, um, just in terms of the fact, you know, I have 297 miles of range here. Uh, that would take me further than I would normally want to drive in a day, um, but certainly you could, uh, you could go um, over quite a lot of the country without having to stop and charge at all with that. EV drivers are very friendly people as well. Sorry, I'm pausing, I don't know if it's audible, but I'm pausing from time to time because I'm getting uh, navigation instructions here. Now enter the roundabout and take the second exit. And um, I don't know how to mute them yet. Um, the EV drivers are very friendly people. I, I spoke to two or three people. This is partly because that was a new facility, but I spoke to two or three people there, one of whom wanted to film me. <laughs> so no, they will not appear on somebody's video somewhere. And there was one couple next to me who had been at the Tesla store just beforehand and had literally just picked up their car and they were as new to it as I had. So we were both joking about, you know, how have you enjoyed the first nine miles? Now, this is a <clears throat> an interesting situation because I know that I could have got into any of those gaps of the acceleration this thing has, but I have to try and be a bit restrained, don't I? Especially on the first day. Anyway, I hope some aspect of that may be of some interest to somebody. Uh, it's certainly been a fun day for me, and no doubt there will be more Tesla-based adventures in the near future.